All right, guys, we got ourselves a little bit of a heartbreaker, a little bit of breaking news from the Seattle Seahawks. They've said goodbye to a player that I think a lot of people were excited to see, and it may have taken a year, maybe even two, for the player to actually do anything productive for the team, but, well... People really thought this guy had some promise, and it doesn't look like he'll be living up to that promise in Seattle if he does anywhere. So earlier today, just a few minutes ago, I learned that the Seahawks have waived wide receiver Tamorian Terry. Of the undrafted rookie free agents the Seahawks picked up this uh, offseason after the draft, Tamorian Terry may have been the most exciting one. He was probably the most coveted one. It was either him or Cade Johnson. And some people thought that he was going to redshirt as a rookie because he had such a weak uh, final year in college. Some people thought he was actually going to make a contribution this year, maybe by the tail end of the season. Some people thought maybe he was going to go on IR so he could stay on the team without actually taking up a roster spot. None of these things have happened. He has been waived meaning that anybody else can sign him and somebody's probably going to because this guy has talent. So as for why this happened, as of right now, we have to assume that the reasons why he was let go was fairly straightforward. So uh, Corbin Smith breaks it down here on Twitter. It's possible there may be more to it, but it sounds like Tamori and Terry's release is strictly depth chart based at one of Seahawks' strongest positions. A typical late June roster shuffle with no corresponding move made yet. So, the assumption to make right now, and we'll find out more later, but right now the assumption is that we simply did not think he had a place on this team. And in fairness... Metcalf is going to be on this team for quite some time. We have every reason to believe he's going to be here for at least another four to five years, possibly longer. Tyler Lockett just signed an extension that is going to keep him in Seattle for at least three more seasons. And we just drafted Dwayne Eskridge, so we expect him to be a big part of proceedings for the next three years minimum. So there wasn't a ton of room for a guy like Tamori and Terry to break in on this team. Uh, he would have been competing with Freddie Swain for the number four spot, which I, I believe Tamori and Terry's a lot more talented than than uh, Freddie Swain. But being the number four wide receiver in an offense like this, it's not going to get you a ton of targets. It's not going to get you a ton of action. It's not the most important thing in the world to have a world beater at the number four receiver spot. So I can kind of understand it from that side of it, but... I just feel like that level of talent, the the potential that Tamori and Terry had, because we are talking about a guy who had a chance to be a late first round pick if he did not have such a weak final year in college because of injuries. So I, I feel like there should have been a way to find room on either the 53 man or the practice squad for a guy like Terry, but not to be. Uh, Corbin Smith goes on to say that Kay Johnson had a really solid minicamp coming back from a soft tissue injury, and Connor Weddington remains a sleeper to watch given his special teams ability. Seahawks may have felt better about those two pushing for roster spot. Tough to tell. Um, it, it's certainly possible that the reason why this move was made is because Kay, um, Tamori and Terry had a what was it, a hip injury in the rookie minicamp and just wasn't able to bounce back from that and Cade Johnson was able to bounce back from his injury. Maybe that's all there is to it. Maybe that's what was the impetus behind the decision to keep Cade and let Tamori and Terry go. It could just be bad luck. It could be also the special teams factor. Johnson and Weddington have both returned kicks or punts in the past. Terry may not have had a special teams role and that's a huge deal when looking at end of depth chart. That's me spitballing some here, but if it's not injury or character related, and I want to say we did not designate him as an injured player when we released him, so it may very well not be an injury, that's what jumps out to me. So, hard to know exactly why this happened, but it has happened. I fully expect some team will pick up Tamori and Terry, and again, I want to stress, there's not really an obvious place for him on this team right now. We have three receivers at the top of our depth chart who we all fully expect to be our top three receivers for the next at least three years, 
possibly even four. So even in the best case scenario, there wasn't exactly an opportunity for Tamori and Terry to come in and be Randy Moss. But I just feel like there was room on him, room for him on this team, and I'm a little disappointed we couldn't make it. And if he goes somewhere else and ends up having a good career, uh, much less a good rookie season, um, that's not going to sit very well with me because I liked him more than Kay Johnson as a receiver. I really did. But uh, yeah, so I, I this one just feels a little different than some of the other releases. Like we definitely have let a couple of low level players go. We brought in a couple low level players over the past month plus, and I've made videos about it and discussed it. This one kind of hurt though because Tamori and Terry was my dude or one of my dudes. All right. So let me know what you think down in the comments. Uh, once again, Tamori and Terry will not be a Seattle Seahawk, and I'm sure he's about to land somewhere else. Um, maybe there was an issue in the reporting, and it'll turn out that we put him on IR, which is what I thought we were going to do all along, but probably not. All right, see you guys later. I'll be uh, streaming later tonight. Peace out, go Hawks. Let me know what you think.